I'd now like to look at a few examples of other circuits knowing what we know about the phase shift imparted by reactive elements like capacitors and inductors and determine by inspection whether or not these circuits can oscillate or not. For the first example, we can see that we have a non-inverting amplifier that would impart a zero degree phase shift to a signal running around in the loop. We have a feedback network consisting only of resistors, so we're only going to get zero degrees through this feedback network as well. So it's possible with this particular circuit that we can have a net phase shift of zero around the loop, but we have no way to select a particular frequency. If we start deriving equations from this circuit, there's no omega that's going to somehow magically pop out of the equations like it did with the Wainbridge oscillator or the phase shift oscillator. This circuit is not an oscillator. In the second example, we again have a non-inverting amplifier configuration. This amplifier would impart zero degree phase shift to any signal passing through it. However, in the feedback network, we have a single inductor. A single inductor, like a single capacitor, can never add or take away more than 90 degrees from the phase of a signal. Because we have zero degrees phase shift through the amplifier, we need to have zero degrees phase shift through the feedback network if we hope to achieve oscillation. We're not going to be able to do it with a single inductor. This circuit is not an oscillator either. We're going to have the same problem with this circuit as well. We have a non-inverting amplifier that will give us zero degree phase shift exactly. And then we have a single capacitor in series. This capacitor cannot give us zero degrees and it cannot give us 360 degrees either. We're not going to be able to get a net phase shift around the loop of zero or 360 degrees. This circuit is not an oscillator. This circuit's a little bit more interesting. We have a non-inverting amplifier configuration. This amplifier will give us zero degrees to our signal. We have three reactive elements. We have two capacitors in shunt and one inductor in series. As we might recall from what we learned about filters, capacitors in shunt behave just like inductors in series. All three of these circuit elements are going to shift the phase of the signal in the same direction. A single capacitor can shift the phase of a signal between negative 90 degrees and zero degrees with the exact amount of the phase shift depending on the frequency of the particular signal. The same thing is true for the inductor and the other capacitor. That means that a signal passing through this feedback network will have a net phase shift somewhere between negative 270 degrees and zero degrees. Because this amplifier is non-inverting, this circuit is not going to work because zero is not included in the ends of this interval. In the last example, we have an inverting amplifier. We have a 180 degree phase shift. Each one of these two capacitors in series can shift the phase of a signal forward by up to and not including 90 degrees. These two capacitors together will not quite be able to give the signal a full 180 degree phase shift, no matter what frequency it happens to be. This circuit is otherwise identical to the phase shift oscillator and illustrates why three capacitors are needed. With the phase shift oscillator, with three capacitors, we're able to achieve somewhere between zero and 270 degrees for the feedback network and 180 degrees for the amplifier. So for one very special frequency, the net phase shift around the entire loop can be zero degrees.